Today, we're building a smart AI application, but more importantly, we're learning a professional workflow for any AI project. A simple prompt on a powerful model might work for a demo, but it's not a production-ready solution. It lacks the reliability, measurability, and cost-effectiveness that a real product needs. This tutorial will show you the data-driven way to build an AI product. Using a workflow inspired by software development, we'll create a tool that converts natural language into complex FFmpeg commands. This task is a perfect example because its complexity demands a robust system. The core principles, using evals, synthetic data, and fine-tuning, are essential for any serious AI project, regardless of the application. First, we'll use Kiln AI to optimize our model. Then we'll use that model to create a command line tool. Thank you to Kiln AI for sponsoring this video. Okay, Kiln is a desktop app, and I'm doing the setup through the browser in localhost. So I'll just call this project FMPEG AI. And just so you know, I previously had to connect some AI service, I put, put in some API keys so it would work with Kiln. And I'll create the project. Now we're going to define what the model should do. This is basically the product's blueprint. So it defines what the AI system is meant to do in a clear, structured way and ensures that you have a single source of truth for the project, which is important for collaboration and consistent development. So I'll just put natural language to FFmpeg converter for the task name. And then for the prompt, your tool that converts a natural language request to FFmpeg commands, your output should be a single complete command line string. And then I'm gonna give an example of what the user says and the output. And we could put a lot more examples, but this should be enough for now. And we'll just use the input schema of plain text and the output schema of plain text as well because it's gonna be a command line tool and create the task. And now we can run it. It's basically a spot check. It's a manual rapid prototype, which can give us immediate feel for how different models respond to the prompt. And then it can help us identify which models are most promising before investing time in a full evaluation. So I got basic prompt method. There's different prompt methods we can use. And then I'm gonna select GPT-40 for the model. And then we'll just put in some input. Create an FFmpeg command to resize the video to 1080p and change the audio codec to AAC. And then I can run that to see what it gives as the output. Okay, that looks pretty good. And we can try a bunch of other models really quick. How about Claude Sonnet? Okay, not bad. And then how about we can try Quinn 3? Okay, I mean Quinn 3 looks good as well. Now you can use this to spot check things and try to tune your prompt quickly, but there's so many different possible inputs and outputs that it's, it can take a while to verify everything. And that's why we're going to make an eval. So I'm gonna go over to the eval tab here, and this is an important step. A single spot check is not scalable, like what we're doing. So an eval allows you to create an automated, repeatable test that measures your system's performance on a specific metric. For a product, this means you can confidently make changes without introducing new bugs. So I'm going to create an evaluator. And so I'm gonna create an issue eval, and it's going to all be just checking correctness. And for the issue, um, ensure the generated FFmpeg command is syntactically correct and uses valid parameters. Focus on preventing hallucinations. And then I just create a failure example of uh, creating a command that has a preset that does not exist. So I can just create the eval issue, the issue eval. So you can see it's filling in some information here. And for the evaluator output, it's gonna be based on pass or fail and correctness. And then it's going to create two tags, the eval correctness tag and the eval golden correctness. So it's gonna be creating this, these data sets and this is the evaluation data set, and then this one is uh, when it's trying to find the best eval judge. So we'll create evaluator. So now we're gonna have to add data for our eval, and we can use synthetic data generation. So manually creating hundreds of test cases is very slow. 
but synthetic. Data generation uses a powerful LLM to automatically create a diverse set of test cases that cover a wide range of user requests and potential failure scenarios, saving you countless hours of manual effort. So I'm going to click Add Eval Data, and then we'll go to Synthetic Data. So now it's set up to create data for the exact use case that we want. The issue L template and then the tags. And so it's going to, we're going to use a large model to create this data. And now we're going to create some topics, a topic tree, which is going to make sure that we create a wide variety of different types of data instead of data that's all similar. So we'll cl click add topics. And then we'll create, you will use one of these high quality models. Um, there's a few that are recommended here. We'll just go with Claude for Sonnet. And then we can generate eight topics. We could manually add them, but we're going to use the model to create the topics. So here are the different topics related to FFmpeg that we are going to be able to create data about. So we add, add the topics. The next step is to generate inputs. And we're going to basically generate using the same method here. And it's going to generate the synthetic input, which is the data that will be passed into the task. Okay, so these are the user messages that would go into our converter that we're creating. And you can see that there we have some inputs for each of the topics. Now we're going to go to the next step, which is generate outputs. So we are going to create outputs for each of these inputs. We're going to make sure that we are on one of the recommended models. And it's going to use our eval template and our this prompt method and generate. Okay, we cr generated 64 new uh, new items. So I'll go to the next step, and I am going. We can actually see what all these look like. We have our input, we have our output and this looks pretty good so we'll save all this data and we can go over to the data set tab and see all the data that this is synthetic data created with this model and then the input and the output if i click into one of these we can see that it's given the correct tag the eval correctness and then a random 20 percent will be the golden correctness so let's go back to our eval and I can go into this. And it looks like we should add uh, some more golden items. Well, we only have 13 golden items, though we suggest 25 items. So that's very quick to, uh, to create more items. OK, if we go to our data set tab, we have a lot more data. And now if we go into our evals, we now have enough golden items. Now the golden data set. Uh, I'll explain more later, but it will be used for human in the loop verification. So for the human ratings, rating the golden data set, that's where we go through and we actually rate to see if the output is correct for each input. So basically we're using the golden data set just to spot check if this is all correct. Now these look pretty correct for, to me. I'm just going to go ahead and just say that they are all correct. So basically I go to each one and do pass and then I can just go through each one and say that it passed. And I went through it and rated all of those and then we can find the best judge which basically is a way to fit, figure out which model is going to be the best judge for our data. A judge specifies how an eval is run with, al with a specific algorithm, a specific model, and specific instructions. Okay, so we'll select the model to judge. We'll do GPT-4.0, and then we can choose two different methods. I'm just going to do LLM as judge. This basically uses LLMs to judge the output of the task. It combines a thinking stage or chain of thought reasoning followed by asking the model to produce a score rubric matching the goals laid out in the eval. So that's going to be the simplest one. I'll just do create judge, and then we will run all evals. Okay. We are done. And so I can set this as default. And so now we will make sure to use this judge. And we're back at our eval. And now we are going to click compare run methods. This is where you leverage your automated evaluation. 
we can now compare different combinations of models and prompts to find the one that provides the best balance of quality, cost, and speed for our specific task. So we're going to select the judge we created, and then we'll add a run method. So I'll select GPT-4.0, and then create. And we're basically trying to judge different ways of running the task. So we have the high quality model for O. I'm also going to add a different one, like we'll do the Quinn 3, and then add this one, and then let's just add a few more. And we're just using the basic zero shot prompt, but if we wanted, we could go to the prompt tab, and we could create a custom prompt specifically to FFmpeg. But I'm just going to use the, the basic prompt. So now we're going to run all these evals and our judge is going to test which of these actually performs best on our test. And we could add additional models if we wanted, but I'm just going to stick with these for now. So I'll click run all evals and run eval. Okay, this is finished. So let's check. We can see the results of how correct uh, different ones are. We can see that Four zero is the highest, of, it passes the most, which we would expect. And we would we can see this one of the lowest models is the, the lowest here. But one thing interesting is that Quinn 314B is not that much uh, lower than GPT-40, even though Quinn 314B is much cheaper to run than GPT-40, I'm pretty sure. So this allows us to quickly try out different AI models. So let's go back to evals and we have this section here, compare models, prompts, fine tunes. So let's try comparing the run methods. And then I'll select some different models here. So now we can compare these, we can add as many columns as we want, but we can see that GP40, correct, is 0.6a, this is 0.63, it's a 0.7, it's 7.4 percent worse, however it's 65 percent cheaper. So maybe it's worth it to just have a slightly worse correctness for a lot cheaper cost. And we can compare as many models as we want this way. So I'm going to go back to evals and we can choose what we want as the, the default model. So I'm just going to choose Quinn 314B because it's a lot cheaper. So now Quinn 314B is the default. It's a lot cheaper than 4.0, and really the correctness is only slightly lower. So we can go back to the evals and see everything is complete here. Now, one thing nice is that we can always go through and test more models, and we can evaluate different things if we want. So these evals just make it possible to iterate, iterate quickly and just try a bunch of different models, different prompts to see which one's going to be the best for the task. Now let's do something new. new. Let's go over the fine tuning tab. Fine tuning allows you to take a smaller, more affordable model and train it to be an, an expert in your specific task. This often leads to a system that is faster, more accurate, and much cheaper than relying on a giant general purpose model. It's the ultimate optimization for a targeted application. So I'm going to create a fine tune and then we can choose a model to fine tune. And I'm just going to choose a pretty cheap open source model, Llama 3.23B Instruct, and then we'll add fine tune data. Then we'll just do synthetic data. And now we do it to clear our existing session because we need different types of data for fine tuning. Now we just go through the same process that we use for evals to add topics and data. So, so we'll go into our fine tuning template. And then for our model, we just choose a good model like GPT-40 and generate eight topics. And then we just go through to generate the inputs. And then after this, we got the inputs. So now let's generate the outputs. And we'll just keep using GPT-40. Okay, now I'll go through, I'll save all the data, and then we can go to this, we can continue with fine tuning here to continue the process. Now we can create a data set using the tag we just populated and just click create data set. And then we'll just start the fine tuning job. 
and then we can view the job. And while this is going, I could actually create a few more fine tunes so we can compare a few different models. So I'll just do Quin 8, Quin 3 8B, reuse data set, and start that job. Gotten a lot of these fine tunes complete, one of them did fail, but I can go into the fine tune and then I can click run fine tune and then I can just put a prompt here and then I can just click run and here is the result that the fine tune model came up with. And now we can go into our evals and just run our evals with these other fine tune models. So I'll just go in evals add run method and then I can just, we have all of our fine tune models up at top here. So I'm just gonna run an eval with each of the fine tune models. And then I'll run all evals. And now I can see how the fine tune models compare to the other models. So I'm gonna go back to evals and go to the compare screen here. Here I see that the fine tuned version of Quinn 314B is worse than the non-fine tuned version, which is a little surprising and could indicate that I should have added additional prompts in the fine tuning. But one thing we do know is that the Quinn 314B seems to be the best model. So let's use that one for our Mac OS command line tool. So I'm gonna show you how to take the optimized system we just built and turn it into a practical user-facing tool on Mac OS. Okay, we figured out wh what model we want to use. We fine-trained a model to make sure it's the, the best model, the cheapest model, the one we want to use for our project. So now we can just create the project. So I already have some code here. And, and in Kiln, there's different ways to get your LLMs into Kiln. So I use Fireworks, which gives us access to a lot of different models. So depending on how you import your models into Kiln, you may be using a different way to get your model into your project. But here is the model name based on our fine-tuned model that we fine-tuned in Kiln, and this comes right from Fireworks AI. So I just have my model here, I have my prompt, it, you were a tool that converts natural language request to FFmpeg. This is basically the same prompt that we use in Kiln. And then it's pretty straightforward. So we have our function generate FFmpeg command. We're calling Fireworks. Again, you may also be using OpenAI model or a model from a different company, but we're just using Fireworks. And we are getting the prompt that the user will type into the command line that comes up later. And this is just how you call the, the chat completions. And then we also do reasoning effort none, so it's not gonna show thinking, it's just gonna give us the final prompt. And then we are going to extract it and return the command here. Now, it's pretty straightforward over here. Um, we are going to parse the command from the command line and add some arguments, just kind of describing a little more. And then we just call our function and we get our command back and then we just print it right to the command line. Okay, now in my terminal, I'll just do a, a change mod or chem mod and that should allow us to run it. Then I'm gonna move it to the user local bin directory. That's a common location for user installed commands. Okay, now I'll restart everything and then I'll test it out. FFGen trim test.mp4 from the 10 second mark to the 30 second mark and save as output.mp4. And that works. So that's the command I can run. So we can just copy that, paste it right in here, and then I can run it. And now we can easily get ffmpeg commands right in our command line using this tool with the model that we fine tuned. Hope you enjoyed the tutorial. If you want to do a project like this with evals, synthetic data, and fine tuning, you can download Kiln from GitHub, and it's completely free. So thanks for watching.